Tasha here with Butterfield Up Hacker Ranch. Today we're talking about how to prepare for the shearing season. And you may be wondering, Tasha, it's January. Why are we talking about shearing? And the truth is that shearing crews are booking now for the shearing season. And you want to make sure that you get booked now and not wait till the last minute. Waiting till the last minute is very risky for you and the animals. Shearing is a non-negotiable when you have alpacas. It's something that has to be done every year simply for their health. We get to benefit from the fiber that they grow that gets sheared off, but seriously, it's for their health. It is the most stressful day of the year for them and for you. You don't want to add stress to that by waiting to the last minute and trying to find someone when the shearing crews have already been through your area and they're somewhere else that they're not going to be able to get to you and it it just leaves you open to a lot more stress and I would say don't do that <laughs> we're a few months out be thinking about this now the shearing crews are you might as well get on board here and get on their schedule and by shearing crews what I'm talking about is there are people professional shears that travel the country every spring and they kind of do a route um, so they have maybe set areas that they go to where they have their regular customers. And when you contact them, they'll be able to tell you when they will be in your area. You want to make sure that you get on their, their schedule. These shearing crews are usually composed of the professional shearer and some assistants, the crew that they bring with. And what the crews will do is they're going to take the animal to and from the shearing mat, restrain them, have the animal prepared for when the shearer is ready. The, what I have found is that shearers like to have two stations. What typically works out best is they have two stations. So the shearer, him or herself, can focus simply on the shearing and they can go from animal to animal really quickly and get a lot of animals done in one day. Well, that means they have a crew there getting the animals down on the mat for them. And when, when the shearing is done, then they take, you know, switch the animals out and they do it quickly, efficiently, and safely for the animals. They've handled hundreds, maybe thousands of animals before. So they know how, how to handle them in a way that's really safe and quick. Since shearing is the most stressful experience an alpaca is gonna have the entire year, it's best to have it done as quickly and efficiently as possible. A professional shear is going to have that animal down and up in a matter of minutes, and that's what you want. Now, you might find a shear with a smaller crew that would like your assistance as well. So you're not standing on the sidelines. You're going to be doing something. So you might be bringing the animals to and from, helping um, to restrain or give shots. So you're certainly going to be handling the fleece once it comes off. Once it's sheared off the animal, it's up to you to decide what to do with that, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But you might want to have friends and family come help as well. The more people you have there, the better things are going to function. So you need to be lining all those people up now. If you are someone who is still in the research phase of alpacas, whether you're just considering it or you know you're going to get them but you don't have them yet, shearing day is a really good experience to have before you actually own alpacas because this is the most important day of the entire year for owning alpacas. This is our harvest. This is why we raise alpacas in the first place. So we wanna make sure that everything gets done the way it really should be done, but you can get in there, get your hands dirty, help in a number of different ways. I also recommend that it not be the first day that you meet alpacas. It being the most stressful day they are not going to be their best selves. And they're not going to be their everyday selves either. It's not going to give you a realistic perspective of what it's like to be with alpacas every day. So don't let that be the first time that you meet them. <laughs> and I would suggest not um, having guests there who that is their first time. Like that's not when you should be introducing alpacas. Uh, <laughs> just, just a little tip there. So how do you find shears? There's a few different ways, um, especially if you have a small herd, find other alpaca farms to do this day with together. There is a, like a minimum number of alpacas that's best to have for a, sh 
when you're going to bring a shear to you that's going to be there all day. They want to make sure that that day is worth it. They charge per alpaca. So, you know, there is a dollar limit that they're they're going for to cover their expenses, especially if the shearer has a crew. They need to make sure they cover the people that they're paying, the travel expenses to get to you, you know, and that type of thing. You may need to go into this with some other farms just to get to that minimum. Uh, you may want to contact other farms. Maybe it's your mentor farm, like where you first bought your alpacas or neighbors that you have that maybe um, have been raising alpacas for a while. By neighbors, they may not be right next door, but like nearby where it'd be easy to transport your alpacas to and from their place within the day. Um, but if you if it's your first year, it it's best to go do this day with someone who has experience with it because you'll learn a lot and they'll give you tips about how to have your alpacas ready for it and kind of how the day is going to work out. So I would suggest first alpaca farms in your area that have experience that maybe you can take your alpacas to, especially if you have a really small herd. But you can also have the shears come to you. And if you have a sizable herd, that, that might just be the best option. Um, I've done it both ways, especially in my early years with alpacas. For the first th three, four years, um, I had shears do my alpacas for me. Um, but for me, there got to a certain point where I, my crew, my crew, my herd grew um, to where I decided that I needed to learn how to shear myself. The last two years, I've done shearing um, of my own herd and has saved me a lot of money. This year, I'm hosting a shearing workshop, like a training workshop. So uh, be on the lookout for more information about that. If you're in the Nebraska area, you certainly want to get in on that. And um, I'm working on some additional training after the shearing that would focus more on what to do with the fiber that was just sheared. So hopefully that'll all work out and I'll let you know in the future on that one. Oh, we were talking about how to find shears. Okay, so besides local alpaca farms, try out Facebook groups. I'll link a, a number of them down in the description box for you. I don't, I'm sure I don't know all the Facebook groups for alpacas, but the ones I do, I'll list there and there might be some new ones since I made this video, if this has been up for a while. You know, th those change from time to time. Uh, but go to a Facebook group and someone else might have already asked this question, but go ahead and ask in there about shears specifically for your area. And you're gonna find someone, you're also gonna get recommendations. You certainly want to hire a shear that has experience and that has good referrals. A bad shear is just going to cause your animals to suffer and it's gonna hit your bottom line because the fleeces that come off of your animal are not gonna be very good, you know? Someone who doesn't know what they're doing with shearing is going to cost you fiber. Your bottom line with the fiber is going to be affected by a poor shearer. So make sure you go with someone who has a lot of experience and good referrals. As for cost, you can expect to pay anywhere from $20 to $35 per alpaca. And depending on the shear, that might include toes and teeth as well. We trim toes and teeth. They're constantly growing in the alpaca. And shearing day is the perfect day to have those things done because the animals are restrained. You can get the, that stuff done really quickly. Um, with some alpacas, teeth and toes need to be done throughout the year as well. But certainly on this day makes it a lot easier. Some shears are going to have teeth and toes included in their price and others are going to be additional and per animal for what needs to be done, what's needed for each animal. So just be prepared for those expenses. Some shears also have a setup fee, which if you're going in on this with other alpaca farms, of course that can be shared amongst all of you and that works out. But if you have them come to you, just be prepared that that may be an additional fee. In preparing for this day, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, minimize your dirty fleeces. That means clean up your barns and dry lots and whatever pastures your animals are gonna be on at that time of year, clean all those up at least two weeks prior to your shearing day because the less 
what we call VM, vegetation matter, matter that's attached to the fleece when your animal comes to the shear. The less stuff that's on them, the less stuff you're going to have to deal with later when it comes to processing your fl- fiber. So make life easier on yourself. Clean, every, clean the environment that your alpacas are staying in. So you kind of minimize all of the straw and burrs and, you know, that type of stuff um, that you don't want to deal with later with your processing. You also want to work on halter training leading up to this day. Very, very important because it is with the halter that you are bringing your animals to and from that shearing mat. And you don't want your animals to be more stressed than they already are because you're trying to lead them on a halter which they are not used to. So take the time now in the coming months to work on the halter training. And there, I'm sure there's YouTube videos that you can find actually, if I'll go and look for some and I'll link them down in the description box for you. But other than that, I would recommend, highly recommend this book called The Camelot Companion. It's by Marty McGee Bennett. And th- this is a thick, oops, a thick book, a lot of information here. It's an excellent approach to halter training. And one of the things that I really appreciated about this book is that it helped you understand how the camelid mind works, which is very helpful for any type of training or handling that you need to do with them. So it spends a lot of time on halter training specifically, halter training specifically, um, but understanding how the camelid mind works just uh, helps for everyday dealing with them. So um, yes, get the book. I'll put this information in the description box, but there's also live workshops that you can go to, like hands-on training workshops that you can attend. I think there might be an online video training now as well. Whatever information I find, I'll put that in the description box for you. Excellent way to go. Um, Oh, and then my last thing for being prepared is deciding what you're going to do with all that fiber once it comes off your animals. Be thinking about that now so that you can tell your share how you want things done and you have all of the resources and equipment and I'm thinking like bags <laughs> and that type of thing. So your fiber is coming off the animal in the way that you want for whatever you want to happen with that. One thing I recommend is that when it comes to the blanket or the prime, the best fiber on the animal which is on the back and then down the sides um, almost down to the belly that's what we call the primer the blanket that's where the best fiber is growing and you want that coming off separate from everything else which is what a shear is going to do but don't just shove that in a bag because that's going to make sorting later more labor intensive so what I recommend is noodling that's what it's called, noodling your fleece. I'm going to link a video of how to do that. Let's see, I'll put that up here in the corner and also down in the description box. There's a video from the Alpaca Owners Association on how to noodle your fleece. And they do it specifically for um, the, submitting it to a show. But what noodling does is it keeps that blanket all intact the way that it came off the alpaca. So you can lay it out on a skirting table and know how it was laying on the animal and it gives you um, a better idea of how to deal with the fiber based on where it sits. But it also is gonna save you time because you know what is on the periphery or you know that type of thing. I will be doing a series on alpaca fiber coming up here. Um, in the next few weeks, I'll be focusing more on the fiber itself. And with that, that's going to give you some insight as to the qualities of the fiber and what to do with the fiber, because this is your money maker. And what happens on shearing day affects your bottom line later on. The way that the fleece comes off and how you're going to do your, your processing later, all is affected by what happens on shearing day. So, I will give you all those resources in the next few weeks so that you'll be really informed and have have an action plan on that day and know after shearing day, this is what needs to happen, ABC, and to get your product that you can sell and actually have the alpacas pay for themselves 
and hopefully more so. So I'm curious what some of your experiences have been with on shearing day. If you've had alpacas for a number of years, um, I would like to hear what your experiences have been. Or if you were just a guest on shearing day somewhere, that would be fun to hear as well. And also tell me what some of your plans are for this year or what questions you may have related to this day that maybe I could do in a future video to help you out. Thanks for joining me today. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Just click on the little alpaca over in the corner and I will see you on the next video.